All right, so First Corinthians chapter 3. Now, just a little preamble to this. What are we going to see here today? What we're going to see here is we're going to see Paul taking the Corinthians to the woodshed. Y'all know what I mean when I say take them to the woodshed? Y'all know that? Remember that old phrase? Y'all too young for that phrase. But back in the day, when your parents caught you acting up, being bad, you would get a whooping. But now, see, the thing about it is when you got a whooping back, back in the day, you got whipped with a switch or, or a leather strap. You got whipped with it. And so, and they didn't want the rest of the family to see how bad you were going get, to get whipped. So they would take you to another place so they could hear you screaming and hollering, but they didn't have to witness it. So they would take you to the woodshed. The dad would take you out there, and he'd get that leather strap, and he'd wear you out. Just whoop, whoop your behind, and then bring you on back in the house and let you, you know, hopefully you learned your lesson. Yes. And the church, yeah, they would they would take you to the bathroom. Y'all remember that when you, they would grab grab you and take you into the bathroom and you hear the hollow the screaming, and then they bring you back in. <laughs> you know what that's Well, this is what Paul's about to do now. Because what Paul is doing, and I, and I say that that he's not doing it physically, but in a verbal sense, he's going to start telling them their problems. And then in chapter four, he's going to uh, expound on Paul on why he has the authority to tell them. And then when we get in chapter 5, you're going to see some stuff about the things they have been doing that is pretty awful. And you're going to say, yeah, they needed a good whooping. They needed a good whooping for that kind of behavior. All right? But the first thing he's going to do is give them the, the, the spiritual whooping. All right? So let's, get, let's, let's go, ahead, go ahead and get right into it. Let's take a listen to uh, chapter 3. Chapter 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth, and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work, shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death, or things present or things to come, all are yours. 
and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God. Chapter. All right. This, this scripture here, I think, is the it should be read in every church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this this is uh, this is one of those those portions of scripture that actually give you an understanding as to the reality of the experience of a born again believer versus uh, a person that's not that doesn't know the Lord. Um, and then, like I said in chapter four, it will give Paul will give his reason for why he can say what he's saying. But let's get right into it. And I agree with what, he, what uh, Haywood just said. But look at what he says. The first thing is and. Now once again, let's keep this in mind. We're reading this. When we hear the word and, what does it immediately tell you? It's a continuation. It's a continuation. What he's about to say is connected to what he already what? Said. So he's saying and. So let's go back and say. He's saying and to what? Right? Remember, chapter 1 and chapter 2, he was uh, uh, bringing forth the aspect that they had a problem. And that uh, that problem was brought to his what attention, and and one of the problems they had was that they were dividing themselves, saying I am of Paul or I am of Apollos, you know, you know. Do we do that today? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Baptist. I'm Methodist. I'm Catholic. We still have those divisions, and the thing about it is, I can't say I am of one thing without denouncing another. So. You, you have to recognize that when somebody asks you, oh, well, do you believe in the Lord? A lot of times we'll say, yeah, well, I'm a, you know, I'm a Baptist, or yeah, I'm a, I'm a Methodist. When we really just say, yeah, I, I believe in the Lord. Now, I happen to like the church I go to, or I happen to like the fellowship that I'm in, and there's nothing wrong with that, but make sure your identification is that you belong to the Lord. That's the key, because Baptist, Methodist, Church of God of Christ, Presbyterian, None of that stuff gains you eternal life. None of that stuff gets you into heaven. And that's the key. And when you sit there and you see how the realities of life, the Bible does say. And, it, and, and not only does it say, but reality tells you that the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Right? And you see it happening. I mean, in my own family, just in the last uh, month, I don't, have, I don't have two people that have passed. And actually, I had another distant cousin that passed as well. But you see it happen, and it will happen. It will happen to me, it will happen to you. It will happen to everybody. Unless the Lord comes in between, uh, before your actual natural death, you will die. Your, your family, your, 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 your parents, cousins, it happens. So, therefore, that's why we do what we're doing now. You got to be ready for it, because death is not the end of it. You, there's, a, there's another reality. And what I find, we talked about it before, like the documentary they, they have on TV. Even scientists now are beginning to understand that this is not the end. Even So it's, it's amazing how these scholarly scientists are coming to the point which with the scriptures they're saying what? All along. So that's why we do what we do. And this is why Paul is doing what he does. And he's saying, now brethren, he says, now he's connecting all that back. All right, and he's talking about don't be divided. Understand who you are, and you, and you are united in Christ. You don't have to be uniform. You don't have to look all alike, but you do have to be working for the same goal. All right, and we gave the analogy. Your hand doesn't have to do what your eyes do, all right? because the eyes are an important part of the body, and the hands are an important part of the body, but you don't want an eyeball at the end of your wrist. You don't look with your hands, you know, remember that whole saying? You see with your eyes, not with your hands. So you, you need the, diver, the diversity of the body parts. We talked about that, right? And so that's all connected to this and. Remember, all, this is all what Paul has said. Be united, but be unique. Be who you are. Don't try to be like somebody else. You don't want your hands trying to be like your eyes. Be who you are, but be united in the same goal. So there, when my hand and my eyes work together to walk, or to eat a bag of potato chips, or to do whatever it is I'm doing, my hands, my eyes, my feet, everything is working in what? Potato chips. I know. Uh, yeah. So y'all know, y'all can give me a bag of potato chips for Christmas. So. Yeah. All right. So that's all connected to the and. That's what he was talking about. So he says, and I, brother, could not speak to you. Uh could not, could not speak to you, speak unto you as unto spiritual. So he's saying, I wanted to speak to you and speak not to your natural man, but I wanted to speak to what? 
your spiritual man. This is what Paul said. Now, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk to your spiritual man. He says, uh, but as unto carnal. So let's, let's, let's follow that through. But I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So I couldn't speak to the spiritual man. I had to speak to the what? What does carnal mean? Fleshly. Fleshly. I had to speak to the fleshly part of you because your, your spiritual part of you is not mature enough to even hear what I'm saying. And he says, and you're, you're carnal, and you are even as babes in who? Christ. In Christ. Now, I have to stop here, and I have to insert this, because a lot of people will tell you, that they'll, they'll take this and say, they don't believe that a person can know the Lord and be carnal. Well, then I say, well, then you might as well take this part, this scripture out the Bible. Because Paul is saying that there are people that are saved, that know the Lord as their Savior, that are carnal. And Paul says the, the analogy is like they are like babes. They're like babies. Now, to, to get the clarity with the, with, with, with the analogy, when a baby is born, a, can you talk to a baby like you talk to a grown man? No. A grown person? And that's the analogy he's saying. Just like how you have to wait for a baby to develop and grow, I was hoping, and here's the problem though, I was hoping that you had grown spiritually so that I could talk to you spiritually. But your spiritual person has not grown. So therefore, the only way to really still communicate to you, I have to communicate to you what? Naturally. Sometimes you have to do that. That's why when you, when, you know, when I talk, talk about taking somebody to the woodshed, a lot of times with children, you know, when they're, they're young, you try to reason with them and their mentality, but they don't understand you. So you got to give them a little spanking. You know, you got to, you know, you say, not, you smack their hands. Don't touch that. That's hot. That's a stove. You, you, you prefer for you to spank them than for him to burn his skin off touching the stove. So you say, no, don't touch that. And you, you give him a little, a little chastisement. But you can't explain it to him through verbiage or words because he won't what? Understand. He won't understand it. So Paul is saying, I wanted to talk to you about spiritual things, but you don't understand it. Now, you can recognize a lot of times a person whose spirit is, and the thing about a carnal person, spiritually they understand just like a dead person. Because you can talk to a, a child about geometry, poetry, when I say a child, an infant, rather, about geometry and poetry. And does he know what you're talking about? No. no. Does a dead person know what you're talking about? No. no so the, the person that doesn't know the Lord, who is spiritually dead, and the carnal Christian, from a standpoint of spiritual communication, cannot understand what you're saying. So you can talk to them all day. You can read this Bible to them. You can say all kinds of stuff to them. And, they, and all they're hearing is, blah, 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 because that's all the baby here. They don't understand it. They don't get it. And they won't get it until they are born again, spiritually, and do what? Mature. Then they begin to comprehend what's going on and what's stated in the scripture. And that's what Paul is saying here. I did want to talk to you about some serious spiritual things, but you can't, you don't understand it. You can't receive it. And so therefore, because of their stage, he then had to revert and talk to them in a manner in which they could understand it. So look at what he says. All right, let's read this again. I'm going to read one and two together now. <coughs> and I, brother, could not speak unto you, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes. I have fed you with milk and not with what? Meat. All right, I couldn't give you any solid food or meat because you are not able to handle it. Do you give a, 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 a newborn baby a steak? His system cannot what? Digest it. And certain people that are born again, they know the Lord. They just can't digest certain things. They, you can talk to them all day long, they're not going to hear it. They're not gonna, it's not going to do them any good. It will do them almost more harm than good. All right? Now, the problem here. Well, let me, actually, let me get to it because he's going he's gonna to tell the problem in just a bit. So I, 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 I could not feed you. I had fed you with milk and not with meat. 
For hitherto ye were not able to what? To bear it. Neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Now, he's describing why they are carnal. Now he said, for, uh, he said, he said, for hitherto I was not, you were not able to bear it. And then he says, neither yet now are you. What he's saying there is that when I talked to you before, you were babes in Christ. I expected to be able to come and to give you some what? Solid food now. But what I found out was that you did not mature. You did not grow. How long was that span, you know? Uh, talk to them the first time? I don't know uh, offhand. I, I can find out though, okay. but I don't know offhand. Yeah, I like the way this one says it. It says, You are acting like people who are not belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. yep. like no living exactly. And so, what you, what you end up having then is, in, is people, individuals, that are uh, not moving from one stage to another. Now, what do you call that in the natural? A person that, that, that is born but is not developing uh, properly. They have a what? Not retardation. They're not developing fully. Retardation. Uh, disabilities. They have so you have some kind of what? Spiritual disability. Now, this is important though. Just because you have a spiritual disability does not mean that you are not what? Saved. Saved. Just like, now, there are some people that would, that would say, that have said in the past, that if you're born with some kind of defect, or some kind of, of, of uh, 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 retardation, or some kind of handicap, that they saw you as not qualifying for, to be a full-fledged human, and they would euthanize you. What group was that? You remember that? The Nazis. The Nazis. The Nazis would say that if you're not adding to the human race and you're not developing, that you didn't deserve to what? Live. To live. And they would do what? Kill you. Right, and that's in the what? That's in the natural. So we have to be careful in the spiritual realm that we don't become spiritual Nazis like. Because a person has a disability and has a problem and has not grown, even though they should have. Because the thing about the spiritual disabilities, you can be healed from that through the word. And you can grow spiritually, but just because the person has not, we cannot put them as unto not being born again. As saying you're not saved. You're saved, but you got a handicap. You say, but you are, you're underdeveloped. You say, but you have not grown. You 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 are spiritually retarded, and all those things are, are are appropriate. And this is what Paul is saying to them. He's basically saying, you have not matured. You have not grown as I expected you to. But I still see that you are what babes in Christ, and that's the key. So we have to be careful because a lot of people will tell a person because they, they struggle with certain things and because they still act like the world. And that's what a, a common person does. They still act like the world. They still do all that kind of stuff. We're going to see when we get into chapter 5 all the stuff that he lays out that these folks are doing. All right? So in, in verse 4, he says, While one saith to another, I am of Paul and the other, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Now he's staying in the carnal because they're dividing their own selves. All right? A person that will cut off his hand is what? Deranged. Deranged. And so that's what Paul is saying. You're dividing yourself up. Why would you cut yourself up? Why would you divide the body of Christ and not unite it? So if you, if you would divide yourself, are you not carnal? You don't have good, what, spiritual sense. All right? And so a person like that in the, in, the, in the natural man, you would have to what? Save him from himself. Keep him from what? 
doing himself wrong. Exactly so. Verse 5. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But what? Ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. So he's the same. Paul and Apollos are just men. All right? Look at verse 6. I have planted Apollos water, but what? God gave the increase. Therein is the key. No matter how sophisticated. Now, see, he goes from talking about babes in Christ to, to what we would consider to be master builders or super spiritual people in Christ, like Paul and Apollos, who do all this wonderful work. And what they wanted to do was to make gods out of and, 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 and make you know, uh, uh, super leaders out of Paul and out of Apollos. But what Paul is pointing out, just because I said things that helped you, don't think that it was me. All I did was plant. All Apollos did was what? Water. But what makes the what makes that seed grow? God. God. God is a you see, the thing we always have to remember is that even though we use our wisdom to plow fields, plant corn, plant wheat, plant all that stuff, if the seasons don't happen, the air, where, where's our where is where is the place that we manufacture air at? Where do we mean? <coughs> did, did we build that? No. No, that came from who? No. Oh. Where is the place that we manufacture water at? Well, where's the place when our earth gets, gets all messed up? Where's the place where we can go and just t you know, trade in this earth and get a new earth? No. Oh, we can't really do that, can we? No. Well, I tell you what, when we get tired of the laws of gravity and <coughs> nuclear fission and, 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 and uh, chemical bonding and all those different things, where do we go to change the codes to all that? And we can't change that, can we? We can't change the way of atoms and molecules. And so what, what Paul is saying is that the reason why that seed went into the ground and came up a stalk of corn, you put one little grain of corn in, and it comes up a stalk with a whole bunch of ears with hundreds of grains of corn on that ear, that farmer didn't make that corn grow. He planted the seed. And he put the seed in the ground and he watered it with God's water. Oh, and by the way, where did he get the seed from? You see what I'm saying? He didn't make the seed either. So who, who did all that? God. And that's the part where we forget. And this is where we become very ungrateful when we decide to ignore the fact that it had nothing to do with what I did. I'm just following God's rules, his instructions. He said plant the corn and the drop. And so what Paul is saying, all I'm doing is just planting the word. I'm giving you the word. I gave you the word. Paul came, I mean, the Apollos came behind me and, and, and just gave you another bit of encouragement, which he described as putting water on the seed. But who actually gave you the life, the eternal life that you have? God did. And that's the part that we have to always remember. People forget that. All right. And it's key that we keep this in mind. So, and Paul is he just going through a, a very, very straight argument. And like I said, he's put he, he's got him in the woodshed, and he's he, he's spanking them with words. So look at verse seven. He says, "So then, neither is he that planteth anything, and neither uh, he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase." Now, he that planteth and he that watereth are what are one. So he's showing he's showing. There is no division. Don't divide them two. Don't make one more important than the other. Because if you got a bunch of water but no earth, and you or you got a bunch of earth but no water, <laughs> you're gonna need both, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So they both, even though they're different, they both work what? Together. Together. And that's the key. So you can be different, you can be unique, but you gotta work what? Together. Yeah. Alright. Now he that planteth, verse 8, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own what? Labor. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. All right. The planting and the, and the watering is an act which God will reward that particular person for. We're going to talk about that in a bit yeah, uh, when we get up to uh, chapter 13 and 14. But let's move on. I mean, uh, verse 14 and, and 13. Uh, right now, verse 9. For we are, what, laborers together. 
emphasizing that with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. He's saying that you're a uh, uh, a development that God is putting together. God is building a temple or a building, a tabernacle, which he's going to do what? He's going to live in. The Spirit of God will come and dwell in with, in you. All right? All right, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a what? A wise master builder. Paul's not being braggadocious. He's just saying, I know God has called me to be an apostle. Or he's called me to do this work. So God has gifted me to be a master builder. That's what Paul is saying. I have laid a foundation and another buildeth thereon. All right, so he's saying, all I'm doing is laying the foundation. But what foundation is he laying? Let's look and see. But let every man take heed how he build thereon. For no other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. Now, what does it mean to lay a foundation? All right, it's very simple. You look at anything that you do from, from a standpoint of building Lego blocks to building a house or a skyscraper. If you don't have a good foundation, what's going to happen? It's coming down. All right. Jesus gave the description of a man that built his house upon a rock, which is the what? Solid foundation. Versus a man that built his house upon sand, which is very what? It's very slippery and loose. It doesn't bind. All right. So that shows a very key description. Christ is our rock. He is a solid rock. And the thing about it is nothing can move Christ. Nothing. So when you're built upon Christ, who can shake Christ to cause you to fall? No. Paul already talked about it in Romans, right? He said, he said that nothing is able to take you out of the hand of the Lord. He said, and he gave that whole description. Neither death, nor life, nor things to come, nor things in the past, nor angels, nor principalities. Nothing is able to separate you from the love of Christ. Zero. Nothing. Nothing can move Christ. So that's why you have to build on Christ. Build on Christ, you are secure. And you should grow. But if you choose not to grow, you will then can, you will continue in your spiritual what? Infancy. Mm. Alright? And that's what Paul described about Corinthians. Alright? Verse 12. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. Now, Paul is giving a description of building materials that you can build upon Christ and still function and survive in this world while you're building upon Christ. Look at some of the things, though, that you can build upon, things that, that, that will actually be put upon him, upon, upon the foundation of, of Christ's work for salvation. Now that you're saved, you can build upon him using these materials. What was the first material? Gold. 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 You could build using gold. What's the second material? Silver. silver. You can build using silver. What was the next one? Precious, Precious stone. See, you can use that. But Paul recognized there are other things that people build upon Christ that can work. But they might not last. Like those other three. What was, what was another one that we listed? Wood. Wood. Right? wood is good. Right? You can build a wood and it'll last for a while. What was the next one? Hay. Hay. You ever seen the hay huts? People live in them. You can, you can dwell in those. You can, make, you can make your tabernacle like that. What's the other one? Stubble. Stubble. Right? You ever see those little, little just, just mash a whole bunch of you know, uh, dried up grass and stuff and push together. And, you, know, and you can live in that kind of a structure, naturally and spiritually. Right? But now when the rains come, when the storms happen, and when the fire comes, okay, based upon how you built, that's how secure your building will be. Nothing's going to change the foundation. So when it's all said and done, so you got 
a gold house, silver house, precious stone house, wood house, hay house, and stubble house. Earthquake comes, flood comes, and after the flood, dries up and fire comes. Now, who's still left on the block? Nothing. Gold is still here. But it won't destroy it. It will, it will do what to it? Purify. What about silver? Silver? Is, is, is gold still gold? Yeah. It's even better gold, isn't it? Yeah. Is silver still silver? Yeah. It's even better silver. Because all the impurities get what? Burned out. Precious stone? Still precious stone? Yeah. Right? You, you, you go through the fire, your diamond is still going to be a what? A diamond. Now what about that, wood, that wooden house? Burn Stubble, hey, we ain't got to talk about that, right? <laughs> They didn't even make it through the water, did they? <laughs> so it just gives you a description as to how you should be building. But you can't build a solid house while you are a babe in Christ. Because a babe in Christ, you don't want a baby building your house. You want a, a what? A master builder. All right. So we go on. All right, let's take a look. Uh, verse 13. Every man's work shall be what made manifest, for the day shall declare it. That's what day? The day when you stand before the Lord. All your work will be made manifest. Because it shall be revealed by who? By fire. And the fire shall try some man's work. Every. Oh, I'm sorry. Every man's work. Of uh, what sort it is. Verse 14, if any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a what? So if you go, when you stand before the Lord and he tries your work by fire and your work stands, what is God going to give you? A reward. Imagine that. Not just salvation, but also a what? A reward. Verse 15. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer what? So suffering loss where? Before the Lord. Recognizing that your life was spent building things that won't transfer into heaven. Won't transfer into eternity. You see that? It won't transfer into eternity. It's only it was only good for what this earthly realm. But but look at what he says. He'll suffer loss, but he himself shall be what saved. Yet as so by fire. So you'll be saved, and you know why you'll be saved? Because your salvation wasn't built upon your works. Your works may be a whole bunch of hay, wood, and stubble, but your salvation was built by who? Jesus. And you don't build nothing with hay, by with hay, wood, and stubble. So your salvation was built with the precious stones, gold, and fire. It was built eternally to last. Jesus did that. But your works can be built upon with sophisticated materials or inferior materials. Either one you want. All right? But the building process is up to you. All right? He's giving you the foundation. That you build on it. What kind, of, what kind of tabernacle are you building? All right, verse 16. Uh, know ye not that ye are the what? Temple, Temple of God. Ah, see, now he's going to get into this aspect. He talked about the foundation, which was Christ. That's your salvation. Then he said, and you're building. And this is what people get it, get, it, get it mixed up in a lot of times. Because they'll say that ye are the temple of God. And they think that because they, they this statement here. Uh, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. And that whatever you built, the Lord Jesus is going to send his spirit to, to dwell in, to live in, right? So people a lot of times use this for reasons to say, well, since I am the temple of God, let me dress up my building. And they go out and spend money and buy them some, you know, sharp suits. And that was that's part of the tradition that has been passed on. A lot of, if you notice, a lot of newer and younger pastors nowadays, they're not doing all of that. You know, wearing those 
you know, Armani suits and you know. It's, it's, but back in the day, that was the thing, wasn't it? When you went to, when you went to church, you had to do what? You had to dress up. A lot of people believe that. And they taught that. You got you can't come to church and you because your body is the temple of God and you better and and really what he's is he talking about dressing up the outer body? No. What is he talking about? In a man. Building up that temple. Right. And so nowadays we see a lot of people that have kind of caught on to that, that it's not all about this outward show. But more about the what? The inner man that you're building for the Lord to dwell in. And his spirit will be in you. Remember we talked about that last week. How the mind, you, you have the what? The mind of Christ. He's dwelling with you. He's sharing his thoughts and the mysteries of the things that are to come are part of his thinking. He will reveal to you that were once a what? Mystery. And he'll show you things. Right? Not only about what he's going to do in the world, but he'll also show you things about what? Yourself. Sometimes the hardest thing to admit is the thing that you have. You know, when Jesus talked about, he said, uh, how can you see to take a speck out of your brother's eye when you have a what? A beam in your eye. Sometimes it's hard to see your issues, but you can see everybody else's issues. You know, I, I can see what's wrong with you, and I can see what's wrong with you, but it's hard for me to see what's wrong with me. But a mature Christian, as you mature in the Lord, you get to the point where you can be, you're able to recognize and see your own, your own issues. Your own problems. I got issues. I got <coughs> situations. Right? So all that part is part of that, that maturity, that growth. Right? And that's part of building and, and using proper building materials. Right? Uh, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God, what? Destroy. destroy. All right. Now, we can go back to, remember when we studied Acts? Ananias and Sapphira. Remember them? Mm -hmm. And remember when I was, I, I was saying, I said, now, a lot of people said, well, well Ananias and Sapphira, because they lied and God struck them dead, they said, well, they didn't go to heaven. And I disagree with that. I think Ananias and Sapphira were babes in Christ that worked and did things wrong, but God destroyed them because he won't allow his spirit to dwell in that kind of a what? That kind of a, that kind of a, a tabernacle. So he, just, and we'll see that as we go into, into chapter 5. Well, Paul will say certain ones that are saved, we have to deliver over to Satan. So that, they let, and allow them to be destroyed so that they would be saved. It's an amazing thing to talk about. We'll, we'll talk about that more when we get into chapter 5. All right? But it's important to keep in mind that God, sometimes we die from natural causes. And that's nothing wrong with that. You, know, you have, you have you know, heart ailments and cancer and all that. But sometimes God says, you just need to come home. Because you, you, you are embarrassing me. Right? You take a child outside sometimes to, to the restaurant, and you're like, you ain't coming back here no more. <laughs> Remember that, Stephanie? <laughs> yeah, no, you don't remember, but me and your mama remember. And so when they act up, you know, when they do things like take a plate and throw it across the restaurant and break, you know, that's when you recognize Stephanie. that. Stephanie, you do that? Huh? How was she? Maybe about two or three. She don't know. I'm going to do that. I know that. Yeah. I mean, they don't know. You put the plate there looking for food. So I don't care. Banging it, banging it, bro. Yeah, well, she didn't bang it. She took it, and, like, she took it and threw it. There wasn't no food on it. That's what she did. She wanted something to eat. Take it too long. That's it. But, uh, but it's important to keep in mind that when, when you're dealing with situations now, and which what Mary's saying, they that's, don't know. she's actually right. They don't know. <laughs> but now, if, if we went out to dinner, all of us, <laughs> And then all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I'm I'm just and all of a sudden I just go pick up my plate and just curl it across the restaurant. I'm like I'm never going out to eat with him because he should he should what no better. no better. And that's what God is saying. And I'm glad I'm glad you brought that point up because that's important to keep in mind the difference between the two. And that's what Paul is saying here. 
He's not upset with babes in Christ. And we should not be upset with babes in Christ. People that just get into learning the Bible, just getting into it, they're not going to understand it. They're, they're, it's going to be like, I don't know what they're talking about. I have no idea what's going on. You know, but as they keep coming, they what? They begin to learn. But after you have matured and you're able to carry on a spiritual conversation, certain things you should know better, right? All right? So if, if while while I'm talking, all of a sudden, you know, Selena gets up or Marianne get up and they start doing what Ed, what Aiden's doing, you'll be like, well now, wait a minute now. You need to sit down. Because you know better. Right? So y'all y'all are, are mature enough to know that that, that ain't proper behavior for somebody, you know, of, of your seniority, of your years. <laughs> so they didn't like that word, did they? <laughs> but it's important to keep that in mind. And so Paul's trying to show them that. All right? And so when you build, your work should be built like a person that has grown in Christ. All right, let's look at what, what else he says here. All right, verse 18. Let no man what? Deceive himself. Himself. All right, don't deceive yourself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Don't think you know it. And, and, and because you have a, some success in certain things, don't think you're at the point where I got this. Let me tell you, excuse me, let me tell you something about walk, walking with the Lord. It is not like riding a bike. You know, they say about a ride, riding a bike, once, once you learn it, you always got it. It's not like that. Not with the things of God. It's always new, always fresh. You need it every day. The reason why the Word of God is typed or described like your food, you're supposed to eat the Word, what, daily, is because it's like that. You can't say, well, I'm going to eat this sandwich and I'm going to be good for life. That sandwich that you ate, that you eat today, won't take care of you for the rest of your life, will it? It will sustain you for a what? For a moment. So understanding the work and the Word of God it's like that. It's an ongoing thing. And it's not once once you understand a certain portion of the word, you then you don't need to know more. You have to read the word daily. But it's the same words. Yeah, it's the same words, but different nutrition. All the time, it's giving you something. That's why we should be in the word constantly. And that's why we also should read the what? The whole thing. Now, one of the things that I suffered from the early part of, of my development was that I only read certain parts. That's like a person growing up and saying, I'm only going to eat chicken. Now, is chicken good for you? Yeah. yeah. But if that's all you eat, that's a problem, isn't it? Yes. Sir. I'm only going to eat bananas. Well, bananas are good for you, right? Yeah. But if, you, if that's all you eat, you're going to have a problem. Uh, I like prunes. Well, if that's all you eat, you being clean, but you you also ain't nobody gonna be around you either. <laughs> but we got people like that. That's why certain people you can't be around. Them. I'm like, man, it's something you eating something spiritually that ain't working with you. All right, and you can tell a lot of times there's something not right. You you're missing something in your spiritual diet. That's why you got to go through the what. The whole road, the whole thing. All right? So if any man, um, is, now he says, let no man deceive himself. Now, don't, don't think that you got it all. If, if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he might be wise. So you have to take on the wisdom of the word, the wisdom of the scripture listening to the Spirit of God. And it seems like that's foolish. You mean, I'm just going to listen and, and, and read this Bible. It just seems foolish sometimes just to just read this over and over and over again. But if you do that, you then will become what? Why? Why? Not that we disparage the, wi the wisdom of the world, but we don't trust in the wisdom of the world. We use it. 
But we trust in the what? In the word, the wisdom of this word. All right. All right. Um, look at verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. All right. So it's basically saying that it's, it's not a, a, a wisdom that will last forever. It's foolishness. All right. It's like playing a game. A game lasts, and, and the rules of the game last as long as the what? Game. The game is playing, being played. Right? You play freeze tag, you, you, right? he tagged me, I can't move. That's the rules of the game, right? Mm -hmm. But when the game is over, you can't walk through life. Every time somebody touches you, you're going to be like, oh, um, can somebody <laughs> touch me? Because <laughs> uh, somebody just touched me and I'm frozen here. And he'd be like, what kind of foolishness is he doing? The rules only work as long as the game's going on. Once the game is over, the rules are over. Same thing with the world. The, ru the rules of this world only work in here and where? In this world. But the rules of the Bible last what? Eternally. All right? And that's important to keep in mind. All right? So uh, we got to keep, we want to do the things that will last not only for this uh, world, but also when we die, go to heaven, and when the Lord comes, we go to heaven, it still works. That's how you know you're building with gold and silver and precious stone. All right, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he hath taken the wise in their own craftiness. There are people that are trying to outsmart God. Now, I don't need God. That's those, most, most of those folks are the folks that say, I don't believe in God. Well, wait a minute. You don't believe in God. Where did you come from? Well, I came from, you know, uh, the Martians, or I came from extraterrestrials, or aliens. Or, well, good. Okay, fine. Where did they come from? And so the thing about it is when you think of, I don't need God, I have my own wisdom. I can figure this out myself. The Bible calls you a what? Fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So when you don't believe and accept that there is a God, you, you, you instantly have become a fool. And all of your what? Decisions and thinking are built upon what? Foolish, Foolish thoughts. And therefore, you are building, a, you are building on what? Sand. And, you, and your world will crash down on you at some point in time. The thing about the description that Jesus gave was that that man that built upon the rock and the man that built upon the sand, both were able to build a house. And the both houses looked what? Good. Until God allowed the earth to shake. Then what happened? He said the rains came and the storms came. And then, so when the things of life come, the ones that's built upon the sand, then what? And that's because you build upon foolishness. We have to build upon wisdom. God is the God of wisdom. God is the God that we build upon. Jesus is our foundation. He is our solid rock. And if we don't build upon that, everything we build, even though it looked good. Now, here's a, here's, a, here's a sad thing. You can build with good works. You can build with gold and silver, but have it on a bad foundation, and it still will crumble. Now, it will be still gold and silver, but you still can't live in it. You can't dwell in it because you don't have a what? A foundation. So it's important to keep in mind, a lot of people, there are a lot of good people, very good people that do some very nice things, but they're not building on Christ. And their wonderful, kind deeds are nice to see and nice to look upon, but they're not stable and won't last until eternity. And that's the sad part. You, know, you have to build on Christ. And it sounds exclusive. It sounds like, well, that's the only, yes. Jesus himself said it. There was no other foundation. That's right. Isn't that kind of like, um, pride, though? Like people who are, do good things but then don't want to accept Jesus just because they want the goodness of Jesus to be of themselves. Yeah, I've done it, right. Right. Yeah, I've done it of myself. Now, in the book of Jeremiah, it says that, that everybody's heart is deceitfully what? Wicked. Wicked. All right. All right, so let's look here. Let's, go, let's see if we can try to get through verse 19. We, just keep, we keep stopping. Let's see if we can get through it. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he has taken the wise in their own what? Craftiness. All right. they, they seem so, so good. And then it looks good. All right, verse 20. And again, the Lord knoweth the what? 
thoughts of the wise that they are what? Vain. So God, he even looks at the thoughts and the minds of people that work and built upon foolishness. And all of these people that did do this are naturally uh, thinking people that don't put God in their thinking. Now, why is Paul bringing this up? He's telling the people that are babes in Christ that your thinking is not spiritual, it's carnal. You're thinking just like the man that doesn't know Christ. You're acting just like the person that doesn't know the Lord. Your behavior is just like the person that doesn't know the Lord. But you do know him. You are saved. But you're just not allowing your spiritual man to grow. Why? Because you are not feeding him. Only person you're feeding is the fleshly man. You're feeding the carnal, and you're allowing the spiritual man to be become emaciated. And the carnal man, you keep giving it everything he wants. I was telling Elijah this morning, you know, I was, get, I was waking up, I was doing my little exercise routine. He's like, Dad, you do exercises in the morning? I go, yeah, well, he goes, I couldn't do it. So I had to stop. I go, yes, you could. You could do it in the morning. You have to tell your body you're going to exercise. And he says, my body would just, I would, it don't feel like it. I, know, I said, I know it doesn't. And then what you're doing then is you're allowing your body to tell you what to do. Your body says, I don't feel like exercising, or I don't feel like getting up, or I don't, and then you just say, okay, I'm going to obey you. That's fleshly acting. So what you got to do then, and being him a young, a young boy, I have to train him. You got to tell your body, no, I know what's best for you. You will do what I tell you to do. And since I know you need exercise, I'm going to have you to do exercise because it's important for you uh, as you go along and, and as you grow. Same thing with certain foods. Your, your body, you, you sit there and you taste those Brussels sprouts or that spinach, or whatever, and your body says, yuck. But then you got to say, no, even though we ain't going to make a great big heaping plate of it, I know you need what? Some of this food. This is good food, and this is what the body needs. So you begin, and then what happens, you begin to train your body that it doesn't get its own way. And the next thing you know, your body is obeying you, and then your body goes along. Your body gets used to it. Your body gets into a habit of doing things. And then when you don't do it, then your body will kind of remind you, hey, we need, I think I want some, some Brussels sprouts. I, I kind of like those things now. I, you know what, your body, you know what, I miss that walk. I need that walk. I need that little exercise that we used to do. We haven't done that in a while. You've trained your body. Not allowing your body to do what? Train, train you. And that's an important part of our walk in Christ. <laughs> Behavioral aspects, it's the same way. You train your body as he, I'm, I, I, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment and say this, because this is important. <coughs> you train your body, watching all that craziness on TV, all them crazy shows, right? you know, Housewives or whatever, whoever. I, I watched, uh, sit down and watch a couple of them things. I'm like, you know what, this is just nonsense. It is absolute nonsense. And all it is to me, I look at this, is a counteract of, 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 the, of the enemy, of the devil, to try to get us indoctrinated and enthusiastic about that kind of behavior. Now, we look at it and we go, oh, wow, I can't believe they does. But we find, we find pleasure in the things that we consider to be incorrect. So we have to be careful. Now, I'm the last one to tell you what to watch. Because the reality of it is, that ain't going to make no difference anyway. So therefore, I don't want nobody to feel condemned. I'm just giving you my point of view and my opinion. Because the reality of it is, I'm not a uh, don't do this, don't do that type of person. And I don't believe that. Plus, I ain't your, 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 your Lord. <laughs> so what I say don't matter anyway in that respect. But I will give you my, my point of view and my, and my discernment of what I think. But... Everybody has to do so, you know, whatever it is that works for you. And I, I'm not saying that person, but I say be careful because I do know there's certain shows that just, it just indoctrinates you, get you trained. I watch all these, these little kids shows and all these kids shows and you know, all these teenagers they live in and you never see a mom or dad walk by. No, no. I'm like, well, wait a minute, where's the mom and dad? All right, they're training these kids. You, you, you don't need to be listening. You just do what you want to do. No, you're not. 
Amen. Not in Miss Penny's house, you ain't in the book of prayer. Amen, amen, amen. amen. <laughs> no, yes. It ain't happening like that. So I'm like, well, where, where is where is the guidance? These kids can't raise themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm reading this book by a critical show called Weird, and he was talking about the, the shows today, and if you compare it to I Love Lucy, and you see in the bedroom scene, there's like two separate beds, and even when she was pregnant, there was like two separate beds, and if you go, you look at the shows now, you're in the same bed, kids are sleeping over everybody's house, mm -hmm. boy and girl. Yeah, well, we're going to get to that when we get to chapter five. You're, you're, you're going to be like, what, that's in the Bible? You'd be surprised what's in the Bible, because mm -hmm. the Bible, the thing about the Bible, it tells the truth. It tells the truth. And so we, we might take a moment or two just to kind of get a, a preview in two weeks from now. But let's finish this one now. But the point I'm making is that we, we have to watch those things that we sometimes allow to come into our body. But our flesh says, I want to watch that. I want to do that. Be careful what you just allow your flesh to do. Examine it. You know, check it out. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not, and, I, and I'm picking on that show because that's just the one that comes to my mind. It could be anything. You know, just be careful. And I'm not saying that if you do watch it, there's a problem. But just make sure that you are examining. What are you listening? Am I, in my mind, am I saying, this? I shouldn't be watching it. But then my body and my flesh are saying, you enjoy it. Then that's something that needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Because if you know I should, no, I need to turn this off. Then you probably need to do what? Turn it, turn it off. off. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in man. For all things are yours. All right, verse 22. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, which is Peter, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. All right, so God has blessed you with all spiritual gifts. You can use all things. You can do all that God has blessed you to do. And there are no restrictions. That's why I had to make sure that what I even said and used that show, I'm not telling you, well, if you watch that show, you're going to hell. I'm not saying that. All right? But you need to recognize, am I following my spirit or am I following my flesh? And that's key to understand. 23, and ye are Christ's and Christ is God's. That's important to keep in mind because we do belong to who? Christ. We belong to Christ. All right. Um, let's see here. Look at, look at, let's, let's do a skip real quick. We're going to skip verse 4, I mean chapter 4. I'm going to give you a preview. We're going to do, we're going to do chapter 5 uh, when we get there. But this is just a preview, and we'll do chapter 4 next week. But we got one minute left. <laughs> so, let's, let's look. Look at chapter 5. I'm going to read this up. It says, it is reported commonly that ye, that there is what? Fornication among you. Do we all know what fornication is? Yes. Sexual immorality. All right, so having sex Immoral. when you are not married. married. All right. And such fornication as uh, is not so much as name among the Gentiles. So what he's saying is, I'm he says, there's fornication among you, but not just normal, lustly, you know, uh, passionate, uh, horny people trying to get together fornication. But he's talking about fornication that's even worse than the Gentiles. In other words, they're doing all kinds of crazy things. That one should have his father's wife? Uh, excuse me? So you're going you gonna, to you gonna be with your stepmom? And then he goes on into it. And then he begins to explain it. Do you see why Paul called this, this Corinthian church carnal? Mm -hmm. And that's just one thing. He's going to go down here and he's going to list a few other things. All right. He is seeing and, and understanding. Remember, why did Paul, how did Paul know about this? What did we learn in chapter 1 and chapter 2? He was told. He was told. Remember the person that told him? Mm -hmm. Chloe, right? Mm -hmm. Chloe wrote And sometimes you need to tell... And, with, and this is important, too, uh, why you need to have a fellowship. Because sometimes, not to make a person feel bad, but if you, if you have a loved one and a friend, and they're doing stuff, and you be like, wait a minute, you shouldn't be doing this. You really shouldn't. You, sh you, you should have the ability to tell a person, 
Listen, as as your brother, as your friend, as, as your acquaintance, as as somebody that knows you, and I found out that this is what you're doing, I'm gonna tell you, I don't think you should be doing that. All right. Now, not that that makes what you better than anybody else, because what the Bible says, we all have what sin. sin. So this person that Paul is talking about, that was that was committing this act, um. He's no, he's no greater sinner than anybody else. But his building that he's building upon is all go, going up all kinds of crooked. All right? Now, if I, we go outside, we see somebody building a building, and they're not using a level, and the building's going up, and the doors are crooked, nothing matches, you could be like, I don't know if you know it, man, but you know, your door is crooked. Your, your door that you're about to seal in there is crooked. Now, if you see it, it would be kind of to his advantage to say, I don't know, maybe you need to measure that again because it looks like that thing's lopsided. And you should do what? Try to correct them. Try to help them. Not, not to say that every time you try to help somebody that they will do what? Listen. They will listen. But you should at least say, I noticed that that door was crooked. Now, I just wanted to know if you, you know, want some help. I can probably help you measure it and everything. I don't want no help. I don't need it. Okay, fine. Go ahead. You know, look, and then you walk away and you pray for them that they open up their eyes. But when they when it's all said and done, that door ain't closing. And if it closed, you're gonna do all kinds of cutting. <laughs> and it's still gonna be crazy. <laughs> Alright? So we can go on and on about that. But we're gonna stop there. And we'll get to we'll deal with that even more. But I wanted you to see what was going on and what Paul was talking about. He's talking about real issues. They're real people. Yeah. And so when you watch some of these TV shows today, they don't say nothing of it. You meet, you know, I can give you a, a, a scenario of a TV show. Somebody get together, new person move in town, da da da. They come together. Wow, they got a, the girl here, the boy here. It used to be back in the day when you watch the old black and white shows, they would come together and they would get what? Married. Married. Now, do they get married? No. No, they just get to it. They just get right to it. And it's like, and it's like, well, well, wait a minute. I mean, where's the real commitment? And then what, who really gets hurt the children. is those individuals, especially the women. Especially the women. And y'all don't want to get hurt. Yes. Um, just a, Colonel Shaw said something about uh, <clears throat> these kids are playing house. Mm -hmm. You know, they're moving in together. They're, they're having a life without actually having Christ and getting married. And they're practicing divorce. So, you know, they, they move in, they break up, they divorce. And so that's why, you know, marriages can't work because they're, they're looking used. for, they're not looking, they're looking for their own stuff. Yeah. And they're looking for what they have to find on TV or, you know, they're not seeking Christ. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus should be your one, number one yeah. first and then seek thereafter. Yep. Yeah. Now, I tell you, uh, you know, the Bible says that uh, we should not be unequally Yo, and you know what that means that a, that a person that believes in Jesus Should marry another person that what That believes in Jesus yeah. Now I had to laugh one time I, was, I think it's, it's, I, I gotta find the scripture Because I'm gonna have to This one gonna use But the Bible when, when God was giving the instructions to, to Moses He says now When you're plowing in your field Don't yoke up A, 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 a donkey With an ox he said, "Don't have a don't have an ass and an ox yoked together." <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Bible. It says, "Don't have an ass and a and a, and, a, and an ox yoked together. Don't do it." And it's amazing sometimes. I, you know, to me, that's probably one of the best marital uh, advices you can give. You know, don't yoke those two together. All right. So it's important that we keep that in mind. So we're going to stop there. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to stop here. And, uh,